Hello. Uh, I was just moving a chair away from me <laughs> with my foot. Anyway, uh, my name is Tony Berard, and I'm here to talk to you about a new game that I invented. This is uh, two days old now. So uh, this game is called Go Fish Colors with Bluffing. And this is a chart for it that I made. I have a three-page document, and this is the uh, chart for it. This game uses uh, the colors RSP deck. I'm going to pause the video for a moment. Okay, I'm back. There was some talking in the other room there, and these rooms are connected, so I uh, closed my little barricade there. So anyway, hopefully I'll have uh, some privacy here. All right, um, so this deck of cards, it's called the Colors RSP deck. And it has the rock, scissors, and paper. And it was invented by Tony Berard. Well, that's me. <laughs> uh, there are six suits in the deck, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And the, well, I can use this chart here to show you. So um, this is a black and white printout, so you can't tell. But this is a circle that has red, uh, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. They're in grayscale, so you can't tell what colors they are. But in the actual uh, file I created, it's red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, and purple. And so the ranks of the cards are ace, two, three, four, five, six, rock, scissors, and paper. I took the coloring out of the rock, scissors, and paper icons and shrunk them down to fit into a cell on this chart. And this cell does nothing, so I just grayed it out. But these are the cells that you can track uh, the movements of the cards during this game of Go Fish. It won't be possible to remember all the movements of the cards during the game. Um, so in Go Fish, uh, if you play with six players, it's probably best to deal out five cards each. That'll be 30 cards, and there's 54 cards, so that'll leave 24 cards for the draw pile. Uh, if you have fewer than six players, then probably deal out seven cards each. So there's uh, the ground rules. And it's best with probably three to six players. Two players, it's not going to work. This needs to be a multiplayer game. So uh, and it's such a simplistic game. You know, children play it. And uh, I guess I should look into the camera. And children play Go Fish. And the basic tenets of, actually I'm gonna sit down then. That's mostly, I guess I'm just gonna be talking. So, uh, children play this game and it's, you know, rather self-explanatory. And you have to use honesty in the regular Go Fish with a standard deck of cards. Uh, a child is supposed to have a three in their hand if they say to someone that's playing in the game also, uh, Johnny, do you have a three? And they have to have a three. And if Johnny has threes, he's supposed to hand them over. And so I've kicked up the complexity. Uh, oh, and, and in regular Goldfish, you can play two to a book or four to a book. Uh, with my deck, since there's six suits, um, you can have two to a book, three to a book, or six to a book. And so with six to a book, that's going to be quite uh, quite demanding, which is why I put that chart together in the file. So I have the file. It's posted on the Game Crafter site. Did I talk about the Game Crafter? Um, you can get the deck of cards at www.thegamecrafter.com. 
crafter, C-R-A-F-T-E-R dot -E com. And in the search box, you can put in colors RSP deck of cards. That will let you find my deck of cards. You could probably just put in deck of cards and find it too. I think I did that once. I have two other games on the Game Crafter site. Fighting Checkers and Go 12. And so back to this uh, 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 fighting. No. <laughs> I, I've invented lots of games now. It's hard for me to keep track of them in my head. But uh, this one's uh, Go Fish with uh, Go Fish Colors with Bluffing. And so the bluffing angle is quite intriguing. So I, uh, I created this chart. Oh, it's on the other side. I created this chart to uh, enable to keep track of, of the cards. And in my version, when it's your turn, you say, Johnny, do you have a, th a purple three? And so, if Johnny has a purple three, well, you don't have to ha you in, with bluffing. You don't have to have a three in your hand to ask. In regular goldfish, you have to have a three to ask. The honesty is part of the game, but in this game, the bluffing is part of it. And so, you don't have to have a three to ask for a purple three. So, uh, if you do ask for a purple three and somebody's got their chart on point and they know you don't have a three or they're at least very convinced that you don't have a three uh, they can call bluff and so uh, but you don't have to show your hand to the person because then they'd give away your hand it would wreck the rest of the game so when the game is done uh, if someone has called a bluff on you that you uh, didn't have a three at that point, they have to demonstrate. And the other players can use their sheets. So everybody, it's like a trial, let's say. Uh, so the person makes their case that at this point in the game, you couldn't have had a three because blah, 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 blah. And they go through their evidence of their thing. And the other people would corroborate or deny that. And so the burden of proof is on the person who called bluff. So they have to prove that that person didn't have a three. Uh, they, might, they might note how many cards you had. If your cards are held out, they can say, oh, you had three cards. And, you know, two of them I know that you had because you asked for them and you hadn't put them down in a book yet. So I know you had those two. You know, you have to use logic like that. So it can get... Uh, it's, it'd be much deeper than Clue, actually, this game. Uh, keeping track of the whole deck, six suits and uh, nine cards, it's 54 cards. And so keeping track of who has them when, <laughs> that's, uh, that's going to be uh, the challenge. And so, uh, where are we at? 8.34. So, yeah... All right, so now let's say, Johnny, do you have a purple three? So Johnny might have a purple three. He might say, go fish <laughs> and save the purple three for later, not give it to you. He might know that you don't have one. <laughs> it's funny. So, uh, so the time you have until uh, you can call the bluff on either the caller or the person being called. Uh, any player can call the bluff on either of the players uh, until the time that the next person starts to address another person. Tim, do you have a red rock? If Sally starts to ask Tim if he has a red rock, then the time for the previous uh, turn is off. Um, so, yes, that's, and like, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, Susie is asking Johnny if he has a, 
purple three, and let's say she does not have a three. And so Johnny might hand over his purple three. And if Susie starts to ask someone else, Tim, do you have a orange six? Then uh, once she begins to ask the next person, then she can no longer be called for the bluff on the, uh, on the, for not having a three. So once she begins to ask someone another question or the same person a different question, like say she knows he has uh, three threes, and then uh, he, she would have to ask, do you have a red three? Do you have an orange three? Do you have a green three? Knowing that he has those three threes and strip him of his threes. Now she's got three threes and she didn't have any to start with. Once she starts asking for the second three, then, oh no, she's not in the clear. Oh, she does have a three. Now that she's got the first three, a purple three, let's say, now she has a three, so she can legitimately ask for a three. So once she starts asking for the second three, she's in the clear. So people have to have their head in the game, you know, because the, the window of time is not very much to call bluff on the caller or the person uh, being called. So, uh, and then the trial at the end, <laughs> that'll be a fun part of the game too, where they haggle it out, you know. Uh, here's how I know you didn't have a three. So that's going to be an interesting part of the game. And then at the end of the game, uh, the person with the most books wins. But the trial part is um, when the players, you know, haggle it out over the bluffs. Um, when, uh, let's say, Tim proves that Susie did not have a three, then Susie has to give up one of her books to Tim. Because Tim called the bluff and he uh, proved his case. And so she has to give up a book to Tim. And so Tim's book count will go up by one, and Susie's book count will go down by one. And so after all that's been haggled out, then you count up the books, and whoever has the most books wins. Um, let's say Tim was not able to prove his case. Let's say he only had five of the threes nailed down. And so the sixth three, he didn't know where it was. It might have still been in the deck. But it could have been in her hand. Let's say he didn't, he couldn't prove that she didn't have the three. And that's going to be part of the deal too. Uh, well, the burden of proof is on Tim. And so uh, it's, he's going to have to know how many cards she had. So he'll have to note that down. How many cards did she have? And then establish what they were. If he can't establish what they all were, then he can't prove that she didn't have a three. Or let's say that he knew that uh, uh, Johnny had three threes and um, Maggie had uh, two threes and maybe somebody else had the six three. So he, knew, he might know where the six threes are and she didn't have them. Even though he didn't know what her cards were, he might know where the threes were. So, I mean, this, this logic can get, you know, you can come at it from different ways as to how the player can prove that she didn't have a three. So, at the time. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be an interesting part of the game. Uh, the proof court, the proof part of it. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be an adult level game. I suppose uh, once kids get to, uh, I don't know, you might have to be at least 12, I would think, to play the goldfish colors with bluffing. I would think at least 12 to be able to account for all that and to keep track of that stuff. Uh, there's going to have to be a notation system that the player is going to have to use, you know, to be able to notate down quickly because the game isn't going to slow down for people. Oh, I need to take some notes here. Oh, we'll wait. 
No. <laughs> Johnny, do you have a four, a red four? You know, it's not going to slow down. So, yeah, this is a, a really cool game. So, uh, yeah, it's two to a book, three to a book, or six to a book. Uh, yeah, and you, um, I guess uh, the dealer, uh, the person who's dealing, you know, maybe you could go through everybody gets to deal once because one game is going to be rather involved. And you're going to need a lot of sheets of this if you play a lot of hands, you know, with a lot of players. So I have it on the Game Crafter. It's free. You don't even have to buy a deck of cards. But obviously the way this is rigged up, you know, with the six colors and ace, two, three, four, five, six, rock, scissors, paper, it won't work for a regular deck of cards. You could set this game up to run with a regular deck of cards, of course. Uh, but you'd have to make your own chart and then play it. Um, but this is for the colors RSP, and I've already done it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool game. So, um, uh, happy times. <laughs> uh, uh, put on your detective hats. <laughs> uh, you know, like Columbo. It's an old detective show. And one more thing. <laughs> anyway. All right, this is Tony Burrard signing off.